Kia ora everyone. Sorry, I am tall, so I put the mic up. <laughs> I was thinking, is that light going to get in my face, being so tall? But we'll work with it. So uh, good evening, everyone. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your busy day to come and connect with everyone and to listen to the wealth of knowledge that's in the room and uh, the speakers, Koti and Dan. I really appreciate uh, that information. It's really inspired me and also uh, makes me uh, encouraged that my talk is actually in line with um, what you guys have been talking about, which is awesome. So I'm actually going to start with a quote that I just came to my mind as I was listening to Cotty and Dan talk is, if we're not modelling what we are teaching, then we are teaching something different. So I guess part of my talk tonight was wanting to share the knowledge that I have been privileged enough to gain through years of experience, um, some positive experiences, some not so great experiences. And as Cotty was saying, you know, life teaches us things. We all experience, I guess, some degree of trauma in our lives. And it's how we learn from that and how we regulate and how we manage that. So I'll start with me slides. So I wanted to cover a few things in my short brief 15 minutes is around well-being, which is actually leading in from what Cotty and Dan have been talking about. And what is it that you want for your own well-being? And thank you, Dan, for we must be in tune, is um, really taking that time to reflect about what is important for you. What do you need in order to manage your day-to-day -day life and all the 101 things you juggle um, as an adult and how to turn intention into action as well as regulating our emotions. So what is well-being? Um, well-being can be a combination of many things. So it's usually a combination of those per a person's physical, emotional and well-being and health factors. And as we're talking about with the Whare Tapifa is, you know, a holistic approach. There are so many things that are incorporated into well-being and it's not just one thing. It's not one pillar. It's not one uh, wall. It's many things. And I think for some people that can get quite overwhelming, but if we simplify it, as Cotty was saying, then we're able to turn that into intention and action and therefore our well-being improves as a, a result of that. It's strongly linked to happiness and life satisfaction feeling content, feeling at ease, feeling, uh, you know, as Cotty was saying, at one with your breath. You know, it's just that sense of just being and being able to be present in what you're doing and knowing that you're doing it with integrity and with intention. It's also the state of being comfortable, happy and healthy, and it's also about how you feel about your life. And your life is important. You, we are all equally valid in our um, perspectives and our opinions and our beliefs but it's about what is important and relevant to you. So some of the factors that influence our well-being, uh, many things, it might be a little bit overwhelming here, but um, we know there are, from research, and there's a whole bunch of research at the moment and literature around well-being, and it's a terminology that's been um, put out there quite a lot over the last five to 10 years, and people might have a different take on what it is, but there are many factors that can influence our well-being. And if you just look at the, the slide there in terms of you know our spiritual well-being, the sense of belonging and connection to community, to self, to others, uh, other factors that can affect how we feel about ourselves is the environment we live in, um, the things that are going well or not so well. We've got things like having achievable and realistic goals. And as Dan was saying, and uh, you know, how, how much, or sorry, and, and Cotty as well, how much are you putting on yourself to achieve something and how realistic is it? And actually, is it beneficial to your well-being? And is it working for you? Are you doing it to please someone else? Are you doing it to gain um, approval because the core belief is I must do this and if I don't then something bad's going to happen or I'm going to be perceived negatively and that's that um, internal thought process. Exercise can affect our well-being, having enough money. We know we're living in a society right now of, um, ch of changeable times, unprecedented times, where people are actually in a position where some are losing jobs, there are financial strains and pressures. How does that affect our well-being, our sense of happiness and a sense of you know, integrity and self? So there are many things, and we could you know, go on about factors that can influence. I wanted to lead on from what Dan was saying in terms of what is important to us. So I want you to take maybe 30 seconds to a minute and I just want you to pause and ponder on what you would like 
for your own well-being and I want you to if you are comfortable and if it's appropriate with masks on if you can hear people to just turn maybe to the person beside you or just shift your on your chair and just explain if you're feeling safe and comfortable to do so what is one idea or one thing that you would like for your own well-being just for you so take a moment and just reflect what's something that you would like for your own well-being and share with the person next to you if you're comfortable Another 20 seconds. <laughs> Okay, sorry to interrupt that amazing conversation that I can hear with through muffled <laughs> sounds. Just to raise a hand, who found that in some way enlightening or liberating or um, safe experience to, to do? Nice. It's really important that we take that time for ourselves in the busyness of life and the ever-changing environment to actually just ask ourselves what is important to us and why and that sort of sets us into motion around turning things into intention uh, into action it's easy to want something it's easy to desire something we have an innate reward system in our brain when dopamine is released uh, when we are doing activities we enjoy or getting um, pleasure out of something but sometimes it's hard to actually take that step to the next level of what you want from a, um, I guess, a growth mindset point of view. So micro steps are those mini goals, those setting those small intentions. It might be, okay, rather than I want to run a marathon, it might be, you know, the first day you actually put your shoes beside the door and you just look at your shoes. From the small, and, and what is it that you're sensing and feeling as you look at your shoes? Oh, I can't go out the door. Oh my gosh, this is too much. Or actually, I really like those shoes. They're really cool. They're funky and I really want to put them on. And I hope they feel comfy and I want to go for a walk. But noticing your experience and noticing what you are aware of when you're setting that, I guess, micro step. So micro steps are enablers to get us to that next level. And the dopamine hit we receive will then keep us in motion going towards um, that reward system. So, you know, this does help us to give enough, get enough oomph to go to the next level. So part of well-being and turning that into action is having an intention of what you'd like. So you've all just discussed in the room something that you want for your own well-being. Now it might be time to consider how you might break that down into steps and how you could achieve that over time and setting some sort of uh, goal, whether that be um, you know, how long you want to do it for. You might you want to do your breathing for five minutes. You might want to go for a walk for five minutes or you might just want to put your shoes on for five minutes. So I really encourage everyone to um, be intentional about what it is that you would like for your well-being to enable you to be happy and healthy and to, you know, survive the days because some days are really, really hard and we all have to find ways to manage. But micro steps, and I could unpack this from a psychological point of view for hours and I'm trying to condense myself into um, short snippets. So hopefully I'm doing okay. So... 
Just a little bit on emotional regulation. So what Cotty was talking about earlier, um, being able to manage the heartbeat of our emotions and we do go up and down and the intensity of our emotions do change and we all have different types of triggers from various experiences, um, from the way we were parented, from our experiences at school, some more traumatic than others. Um, the word bullying nowadays just brings back trauma. But um, we all have those triggers for our emotional changes. So part of being able to manage our emotions is uh, what I sort of talk about from a four step point of view around the awareness. And again, being aware of what you are sensing, feeling, thinking, and what you're doing. If we don't have an awareness of what's going on in our body or in our emotions or our thoughts, we can't shift anything, we can't change. We usually stay in a stagnant state or we normalize it as this is just how it is and I can't do anything about it. And it's really easy as humans to go to your default position and someone's default position might be procrastination, someone else's might be using caffeine, someone else's might just be staying in bed, someone else might be like just getting on your phone and flicking through and going, I'll do that later. So it's about being aware, being aware in the moment of what you're doing, why you're doing it and the impact it's having, not only on you, but on others. And then the acknowledgement. It's good to acknowledge, and as uh, we were talking again, as a Kiwi society, we're not great at confronting or addressing things perhaps, but part of that acknowledgement is the experience, acknowledging the fact that this is tough, you're feeling emotional, you're not quite sure what to do, you're feeling confused, and allowing it to be. So often as a society and as humans, we want to fix, we want to rescue, we want to do, we want to problem solve. But if we don't go through the process before we problem solve, then we come up against obstacles time and time again and we go around around the mountain um, and those life lessons just keep popping back around the mountain and then we um, often yeah, face the same situation. So then it's the validation. Validation is allowing yourself to acknowledge and validate it's okay to feel and experience what you are. We're so good at judging ourselves as humans. Oh, I shouldn't do that. I should do this. I need to do this. I can't do that. But sometimes we just need to validate it's okay that I'm struggling. It's okay that I don't know what to do. It's okay that I don't know how to talk to my family about COVID or the up and coming things. It's actually, it's okay. And that gives us the space <coughs> to then reflect and process and then move forward. The other part is the response, not react. It's really easy to react to a situation, particularly when that heartbeat's going bleep, bleep, and you're sort of feeling all that physiological stuff, your tummies and knots, as um, Cody was saying, your heart rate is racing. And again, breath is the number one thing that can calm our heart rate down quicker than anything, is breathing. Quicker than any adrenaline shot or anything they can give you, uh, it's, it's, it is breath, that centralization. So if we can use our mindfulness skills, know what we need for our well-being, we can acknowledge and validate, then it's easier to respond to a situation rather than react. And that helps with our relational engagement. Uh, how do we engage with others? And if we're in an emotional state, you can hold your integrity and your position and you can use that as your strength in order to have a win-win situation whatever that may be for you. It could be talking to your boss about something. It could be talking to a colleague and, and addressing something that's a struggle. But if you've got the, the awareness of what's going on, you can acknowledge it, you can validate the experience, and then you can respond, the chances are your well-being is going to be in a much better uh, position. You're going to feel a lot better. You're going to cope a lot better with the changes uh, in the climate and environment and you will generally feel better. So it may sound overly simple, but it is about the art of practicing and the art of awareness and the art of acknowledging and validating and then responding, not reacting. So just adding to that a little bit, uh, just a little bit more around the awareness. Uh, so it's about, you know, your body is your friend. It always gives you clues. <laughs> Our body talks to us. Um, you know, it tells you when you're hungry, need to eat, need to go to the toilet. It tells you when you're tired. Sometimes we don't listen to it. it. Tells us it's time to go to bed now and you're still like on your phone flicking or doing an email or, you know, and or you're rubbing your eyes or you've got a headache and, you know, it's, it's telling you, it's talking to you. How good are we at listening to it? And then how good are we at giving it what it needs? And if we can create space and time to have those conversations with ourselves, it is easy to cope with life. 
acknowledging again, don't ignore. The more we ignore, the more things build up, build up, build up. And then we often do emotionally explode or we get what we call emotional constipation. <laughs> we struggle to release our emotions or they build up to the point where we release them in ways that aren't so flash and that can cause conflict and struggle. And again, we're going around and around the mountain. So we try to, you know, address life's problems um, using, you know, as a therapist and as a psychologist, tried and true methods and evidence-based practice um, and, you know, getting the results that everyone deserves and needs and wants. And again, that responding, it's about that ability to bounce back to adversity. And if you can respond, not react, um, it, again, the art of that is um, in the practice. And I think just taking that time to allow that. So I just have one final slide around just taking care, just a little acronym thing for, um, you know, it's important to take time for yourself. You are important. You are number one. It's not selfish to look after your well-being or your needs. That's why we say put the, you know, mask in an airplane. Put the mask on yourself first for oxygen. Uh, otherwise, you can't assist the person beside you if you've passed out. You know, ask for help. It's really important to reach out and ask for help. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. It's a strength and courage to ask for what you know you deserve and need. Keeping positive as best you can, you know, being um, effort, positive affirmations, things that you're grateful for, even if it is having a piece of toast, you're grateful for the opportunity to be able to, you know, eat today. And it might seem minuscule in the face of what you're um, facing, uh, but that ability to be grateful for something in our life definitely helps with our well-being and our mindset. Expressing how you feel, being able to acknowledge and express it you know I'm feeling confused I'm feeling upset I'm feeling angry I'm feeling really worried and concerned and it's not those aren't taboo words they are an, an expression of what you're experiencing and it's valid continue daily tasks it's really important to try and keep routine as best we can in times of stress and struggles you know keeping simple things going like the bedtime routine or you know could be having a shower it could be you know breakfast routine could be just uh, looking at something positive. I like to look at memes at the moment, funny memes. They kind of give me a, um, or positive um, TikToks. Not that I have TikTok, but I have friends, they, they send them to me because they're like, look at this one. I'm like, how do you guys do that? <laughs> so I get the pleasure of laughing at TikToks, not being part of it. Uh, also um, applying um, positive coping strategies, things that are positive, that actually produce positive outcomes. So whether that be going for a walk, you know, watching something um, on tally that you enjoy, talking to a friend, having a cup of coffee, as well as, um, you know, relaxing and resting as needed. Remember, your body is your friend. It will tell you when you need to rest. It will tell you that you need to take some time out. It's just listening and giving yourself permission. And eating well. It's important that we feed our soul and feed our body and and give it nutrients. It's really easy to skip meals when we're stressed and tired. Oh, I don't need breakfast. Oh, I haven't had anything for lunch. And yes, you know, I haven't had dinner yet, but I'm looking forward to going home and having dinner. So it is really important that we try as best we can to nourish our body, to nourish our mind, and to give ourselves what we need and give ourselves that permission. So that's all I've got time for now, but I really appreciate, um, you know, the yeah, the experience in the room and the knowledge, and I'm really looking forward to being part of the um, conversation on the couch and um, hearing from you all. So thank you.